from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Metropolitan Water Utility, Joburg Water, has announced it will expand the capacity of the Drefontein Wastewater Treatment Plant in Krugersdorp from 55 megalitres to 80 megalitres to account for a growing population and increasing amounts of stormwater flowing into the plant, while Ney Arnoldi visited the site. The Drefontein plant currently collects and treats 42 megalitres of sewage a day, which is 75% of the nameplate capacity. Drefontein Wastewater Treatment Works Manager Jacqueline Nguenya says the plant has been expanded various times since the initial 15 megalitre plant was commissioned in the 1970s. However, the expansion to 80 megalitres will be the last, since the plant is surrounded by residential areas and will have reached its maximum expansion potential. The expansion project will start in the next year or two and will take about four years to complete in its entirety. Nguenya says the timeline depends on fund availability. The Drefontein plant is one of six Joburg water wastewater treatment plants and treats the sewage from Rudderpoort and some areas of Mughalai city including Mulders Drift, Mughalisberg, Kagiso and Krugersdorp. It currently serves about 100,000 people. Nguenya unpacks the wastewater treatment process. So we receive the sewage from uh, your, our outfall sewer uh, and we service uh, the northern parts of uh, Rodeport, Meadows Drift, uh, Ritfontein and a section of Mukhali. Uh, so the wastewater comes through the head of works, preliminary treatment process unit whereby it is screened uh, to remove uh, your plastic rags and other large objects. Uh, we screen via, there's a manual uh, rake screen and there's mechanical uh, fine screens. And then the water passes through to the grid removal system whereby we, the grid and sand is removed to ensure that we don't damage the infrastructure and equipment downstream the wastewater treatment works. From there, water passes through the channel, it goes to the primary settlement tanks where you settle your raw sludge, pump it into the fermenters for fermentation, and then the flow goes through to the balancing tank. The balancing tank, uh, it's for the vari it's to actually ensure that we able to even out the variations that occurs uh, throughout the day in terms of the flow and the load that's coming through. So it's actually keeping the constant feed in to the downstream uh, process in terms of the load and uh, the quantity going through the biological nutrient removal uh, bioreactors. From the balancing tank, then the water goes to, it's split into two units. The one unit is a 30 megalitre a day plan uh, unit, and the other one is a 25 megalitre a day uh, unit. Uh, the unit one is a five stage uh, process, biological nutrient removal process, whereby you've got the pre anoxic zone, anaerobic zone anoxic zone, aeration zone, and re-aeration zone. And then the other unit is a typical four-stage uh, Johannesburg process, which consists of the pre-anoxic zone, your anox uh, an anaerobic zone, ano uh, ano anoxic zone, and aerobic zone. Uh, from the biological nutrient removal uh, bioreactors, then your waste activated sludge is cycled in the secondary clarifiers and it's recycled back into the bioreactors and some of it is wasted and treated further in the sludge handling facility. And then your clear effluent from the secondary clarifiers would go through uh, the disinfection process whereby we dose uh, calcium hypochlorite uh, to disinfect and it, then the clear effluent is and disinfected and it's discharged into the river which in our case it's the crocodile river. The fully automated plant has consistently exceeded the targeted effluent compliance rate of 90% set by the Department of Water and Sanitation for green drop water. 
by averaging an effluent compliance rate of 98%. Nguenia says it's important for clean water to be put back into the environment to prevent waterborne diseases and limit pollution. The effluent compliance rate of the plant drops to about 95% in times of load shedding since it has to release partially treated water in these instances. Nguenia assures, however, that the resulting effluent is still clean, just not chemically treated. With the amount of sewage and storm water that continuously flows into the plant, it's impossible to pause the plant during load shedding. Rather, Drifontein prioritizes the critical treatment processes that need to keep running and reduces the risk of damage to equipment owing to severe overflows. The plant runs on backup diesel generators when necessary. However, it has a biogas plant constructed with pending commissioning. Another Joburg water operation in Diepslut has a biogas plant, which ran from November 2012 to December 2019 at only 20% capacity. Nguenia explains the outstanding elements to the Driefontein biogas plant's commissioning. Uh, with the biogas plant, it's been uh, constructed uh, however, we haven't commissioned because we are looking at uh, ways of efficient uh, digestion in, in terms of us producing a constant supply of biogas to ensure the continuous running of the engines. So Jobe Water roped in CSIR who are currently investigating a suitable substrate which we're going to supplement to the digesters with our sludge to optimize the digestion process. And further to that, we're looking at other retrofitting, other treatment uh, units, uh, the sludge thickening, because when you thicken your sludge, it optimizes your digestion process. So we're looking at uh, further uh, thickening of the sludge. But yeah, uh, CSIR have made uh, strides in terms of uh, their investigations. It's just a matter of time before we know exactly which way we're going to go. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.